Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at stratification and differentiation, focusing on functionalist theories of stratification. In this video, we're going to examine the functionalist views of stratification and how society is structured on an agreement on the shared norms and values of society, or what functionists refer to as the value consensus. When examining functionist ideas of stratification, it may come as no surprise that we focus on the work of Emil Durkheim and Tolkott Parsons. We're also going to examine the ideas of Davis and Moore and their views on role allocation, which we have visited in earlier topics such as education, and how their ideas influence new right ideology. Durkheim, Parsons and Davis and Moore all argue that society is structured around shared norms and values that are passed on from one generation to the next through the process of socialisation. However, there are subtle differences in how they view the organisation of society. Firstly, let's look at the work of Emil Durkheim. Durkheim, writing at the time of the Industrial Revolution in Western Europe, suggested that the social changes that accompanied the Industrial Revolution, namely rationalisation and urbanisation, have led to society changing the way in which it was organised. In pre-industrial society, Durkheim focused on society being brought together through mechanical solidarity, that is one based upon a strong collective belief in religion and a sense of local community. But as society progressed and people moved to towns and cities and worked in industry, this belief in religious collectivism began to wane. Durkheim suggested that the mechanical solidarity of the pre-industrial era was replaced with organic solidarity, whereby people started to focus upon the interdependence between one another, particularly through employment. In order to complete jobs and get paid, those with different skills were required. This, for Durkheim, was the foundation of meritocracy with the increasingly complex division of labour meaning that more highly skilled individuals would earn more than their less skilled counterparts. Durkheim argued that this would not be a threat to social solidarity, as individuals will be aware of the different levels of skills that others had. Furthermore, individuals had equal opportunities to acquire these skills and provide everybody with a chance to progress. For Durkheim, this differentiation would not cause conflict as long as individuals were provided with equal opportunities. Parsons took Durkheim's work and developed it further, looking to establish a functionalist theory of stratification in society. Given the competition for higher positions and status in society, Parsons acknowledged that social class hierarchies would develop conflict namely because individuals would come into conflict with one another for positions and status. However, Parsons suggested that the stratification of society would become inevitable, as people had different levels of belief in the value consensus. Those who had not been successful in gaining higher status employment would inevitably have less commitment to the shared norms and values, whilst those that reward it would reaffirm their commitment to society's value consensus. The more status individuals received in a society, the more invested they became in the value consensus. As this system developed, Parsons argued so did the material rewards from higher pay and higher levels of status, and so society would become stratified based upon the ability of individuals. Perhaps the most significant explanation of stratification, however, is that provided by Kingsley Davis and Wilbur Moore. They suggested that stratification was both inevitable and desirable due to the need for society to function adequately. They argued the most suitable people should be assigned to the highest status professions. This was often achieved through education, whereby individuals would have the opportunity to demonstrate their abilities in a range of areas, and those that were most talented were allocated into pathways that would lead them towards employment in higher status positions. For example, those that are displayed in aptitude for science may be steered towards medicine or engineering. Those with interpersonal skills may be allocated to managerial roles. For Davis and Moore, this was fair and beneficial to society. However, it does leave many in lower status positions, particularly if they are unable to achieve the correct qualifications. Davis and Moore suggested that this was fair because it was based on merit and that not all individuals had the talent to succeed. Allocating those with the correct skills and aptitudes to higher status positions benefited society as a whole, as it meant the most qualified and talented would be able to perform the roles that suited their abilities. 
Meanwhile, roles that had a lower status in society, for example, manual labor or retail, were able to be performed by those with less specialist skills. Davis and Moore argue that these lower status roles were also necessary, but did not require specific talents. How is this maintained? Well, for functionists, the key to stratification is promoting ideas of meritocracy and people acquiring status through their achievements, rather than through being given ascribed status at birth. They argue that providing equal opportunities for people to achieve status in society will reduce the level of conflict, as those with lower status will have the opportunity to improve their position through education and employment. This makes it fair, and those who do have higher status are respected for their talents and their dedication. The main social institution that fulfills this function of promoting meritocracy is education, with people having the ability to show their talents and be allocated to higher roles in society. However, this fails to acknowledge that people do not have equal access to education or face barriers in achieving status in society. And this is one of the main criticisms of the functionist approach to stratification. Functions have been criticised for failing to acknowledge that individuals do not always get rewarded for their efforts, nor do they all have an equal opportunity to achieve status in society. Children born into poverty, for example, will start behind their more affluent peers and will face significantly more barriers in achieving. Functionists also fail to acknowledge the different experiences of individuals in society, instead focusing on the value consensus. Not all individuals in society subscribe to the shared norms and values, and there is an expectation of individuals to adapt to the value consensus rather than society becoming more inclusive. As society moves into a postmodern age, functionism fails to acknowledge the fragmented nature of norms and values, and so can be criticised as being outdated. Furthermore, functionists fail to acknowledge that while society may reward people's efforts, the upper classes have ascribed status rather than achieved, causing conflict between social classes as they have many advantages that the working class do not. However, functionist views of stratification have been influential, and this can be seen through society's view that hard work and ability is the only path to rewards in society. This is reinforced through social institutions such as media, education, employment, and even the family. Functionist ideas have also been central to the development of new right and conservative thinking, and this can lead to a victim-blaming culture, making assumptions that individuals with lower status are there due to their lack of effort, rather than the structure of society. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on stratification and differentiation, focusing on functionalist theories of stratification. Thanks for watching.